strategy. Now, personally, I always recommend that each trader build their own strategy because it's the only way that you will know all the ins and outs of it. And there's tons of strategies to start with. I'm not telling you to start from scratch. Like tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the support and resistance strategy. I've been trading with it for years, but there's no way in a one hour class or a 40 minute class that you're gonna be able to pull all of that knowledge out of my head. There's no way that you're gonna learn all the innuendos and all the little ins and outs of my brain registers when I, I'm using this strategy. So I'm gonna give you the basics or the tools to start and then you need to define it and make it your own personal strategy. So when you build and test your own strategy, you are the master and you understand all the ins and outs and you are not just trying to duplicate someone else's or my thoughts. Believe me, you don't wanna be in my head and try to duplicate my thoughts. Now I always encourage traders to develop their own strategies time permitting. There are several reasons why I believe it is important for a trader to develop their own strategies. First, creating strategy requires a trader to develop a greater knowledge of the market and its price movements. Second thing is, tonight I'm gonna to give you some general information. I'm gonna give you the, the basic steps. But see, when you sit down and write these steps out, and then you try to define them and you try to reenact them, you're gonna find that there's lots of other things you wanna put into it that you're gonna see, that you wanna see happen. And all of a sudden you're gonna realize you have a well-developed strategy based on Barry support and resistance strategy, but it's now Billy Bob's strategy. And Billy Bob knows how to make it work better than anybody else. So secondly, when one develops their own trading strategy, they are tuned into how that strategy works. What will cause it not to work and they will be much better placed to adjust it as needed. Even if you trade someone else's trading strategy, test it thoroughly. And in the process, make it your own as you learn the ins and outs of it and possibly adding your own twists. You know, you might say, oh, look at that. Barry didn't, get, didn't talk about that or Barry didn't take that in consideration. Or maybe Barry trades predominantly Forex and you trade predominantly cryptocurrency and you see something unique that happens using that strategy with cryptocurrency. Or maybe it's unique and adjusted for your stock market. Now, this is a time consuming part, but for me, the real fun is testing out what I produce. And before we can test it, we need to have an idea. And how I generate ideas is by watching both charts and past in real time. So I'm not saying tonight to apply what I give you and start trading with it. That would be a big folly. What I'm saying is to take tonight to take what I'm giving you, start putting it into some framework, put it on your charts, and then start devising it and testing it and see when it works and when it doesn't work, and then adjusting it better or just, you know, discounting it. So in short, I want you to analyze your charts looking for opportunities. Examine those opportunities and instruct how you turn those opportunities into real money without exposing yourself to excessive risk. So your most important thing is your filters. Because not all trading advice is good advice. Figure out where the advice has come from how much you can trust the source, and this is particularly important when you're using the internet, okay? There's lots of people out there. You're gonna look up support and resistance strategy, and then you're gonna find some guru out there who's just mucking some system because he wants to get YouTube views, and he really doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just, he did this, this, and he's trying to tell you, do this, do this, do this and you're always gonna make money. Don't ever follow somebody's steps. Use them for the framework. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now, when you're looking at a strategy, you have to decide what you want that strategy to do. 
You have to decide whether you want to what you want to accomplish. Do you want just trading signals? Do you want it to help you with entry and exit points? Do you want it to help you set stop losses and take profits? Do you want it to do your risk management? Does it, do you want it to give it exit points? Now, let's start talking about building this support and resistance trade strategy. Now, tonight, we don't have a great time in class to talk about support and resistance itself. Hopefully, most of the people attending the class tonight have some general understanding or general concept of what support and resistance is. The important part is that you get better with identifying these levels. It's the levels where price changes in reverse. Now, to be honest with you, I keep trying to change the word support and resistance because I don't believe in them. They work very well in old fashioned, slower moving markets, and especially with non online trading. Today, we should be calling these price levels because support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. It just depends on which way the market's moving. And I don't ever change my terminology. I always call it the support level, the price above the resistance level, the price below. But just call them price levels because you can get lost in defining them. Because as price moves down, that is a resistance level. As the price is moving up, it's a resistance level. Price moves above it, it becomes a support level. So if you think of support and resistance like an elevator. When you're in the car in the elevator, you need to, when you're moving up, the floor below your feet is supporting you and the head above, the ceiling above your head is what your resistance is. In order to get to the next floor, you have to break through that ceiling and move up, correct? So if you were on ground floor zero, you went up next floor, well, right above you is floor one, that's your resistance. But when you break through floor one, that floor one becomes the floor under your feet and this becomes your support. And the, the next ceiling is floor two. But when that elevator car turns around and comes down, what happens? The floor below your feet is your resistance. And when you fall through it, the floor below your feet becomes your resistance and the, the ceiling becomes your support. It's just the same thing. So if you just imagine these as the steps or the progressions or the price levels that are important as price moves up and down. Because what's more important is not the names of them. I use a concept called eyeballing to get my support and resistance levels. Now I get these by looking well, I've been using my charts for so long, but when you look at your charts and you're starting the first time to draw your lines on there, you would go back historically and look for the price, the price levels where price either reversed, got stuck, had a different, you know, had difficult time going above, a difficult time falling below. You might look at swing highs and swing lows way back when, whether you're looking at a one hour chart, a one day chart, and you isolate these prices and you draw these levels forward. Now, the Euro is trading against the dollar at a historical low. There's really no support and resistance levels there. But as the Euro goes, say, back up to 111, 112 down the road, those levels that you had drawn on there six months or a year, a year ago or two still are valid today. So you're not constantly drawing new support and resistance levels on your charts. Well, let me actually pop up a live chart and we'll try to show you this. Okay, see this chart? See all those dashed and dotted lines in different colors? <clears throat> well, the colors have nothing at all to do with you guys. They have to do with me only. The dashes and the dots and the thick have nothing to do again with you. They have to do with me because I've developed my system 
and I have keys for because you see these lines are way back on my charts forever. And as price moves up and down, all of these lines come into the different lines come into existence as price moves to those levels. Now, the difference I use between my thin, my thick, and my blue is how important that level was and how many times it got hit when price was at this level. And also, how long ago this level was achieved. So like these yellow or gold lines are critically important support and resistance lines. They have held for a very, very long time, for years. And every time price falls down to this level, this level holds again. So I've kept them on my charts as historical. But we can see here as price moved up to 111, these are also very important levels. Now, if we look at our current trading, see, let's do it this way. But this is the current live chart. Now we can see that, look how important this blue level was in our most recent tradings. That blue level, that price level was strategically important. It stopped price every time it pushed up to the 107 level. Look how strategically important the first gold level was. Price went up, bounced off, moved up, bounced off, moved up. And guess what that is? That's part of your support and resistance strategy. I mean, that would have given you a lot of excellent trades over that time period. And all you would have had to do was enter after price bounced off the, the price level and exit it before price came down to the next level. And then every time it reversed, you could have entered. Now, today, look at what happened. The two historic levels. Now, these two gold levels are very critical levels because they were at the lowest point that the euro dollar has been. Now, we can see how much they held. And then as we move here, we've now, unfortunately, you don't see a level really drawn below. You know why? Because the Euro dollar hasn't been at this level. This is a new achievement. So we would be drawing on a new support and resistance level somewhere around there. We're using our eyeball to see those levels that were critically important, where price congested. Here's another level. And keep in mind, support and resistance levels are not finite numbers. Even though when you read about them in the paper, you read somebody's technical analysis, they might say that support level at 119.052.47 it isn't 119.052.47. It's between 119.052 and 119.053. It's a zone. It's a area. Because price, especially now that we're over four digits to the right with pips, price doesn't always stop at that same level. And because we've actually drawn these on with eyeballing, we've only guesstimated. Because all I want to know is this, this level is a critically important level. And if we look back over, look at this. Once price broke through our green level or the 101, came down here right below parity, bounced off, moved back up, came back down here, bounced back up, moved back up, finally broke above parity, but most likely it's gonna come back down into this zone again. But we could have gotten in several good trading opportunities in that time frame. I mean, here, I just dropped back to a 15 minute chart. Look at all the trades you could have gotten in because those support and resistance levels happen to be holding extremely well. Or those price levels happen to be extremely well. Okay. So that's the simplest, the most simplistic explanation I can give you. 
But then we can go on, we have to have more than that. That's too generalized. But as you can see here, we've got a support and resistance channel or a price level channel. We've got our support and resistance lines on our charts. Actually, let me change my background back to white. Okay, so once again, you can see all of our support and resistance levels drawn on the charts. We can see a price channel incorporated. We can see each time price came down to our support level or our price level, and each time it came up to our resistance level. Again here. Like I said, there's true areas where price will hold. There's other areas where it doesn't hold. But when you can isolate when those prices are holding, it can become a very good indicator of what is happening in the markets. So let's go back to my PowerPoint for a minute. So support and resistance areas show you where to buy or sell. They are a vital part of every trader's toolkit. And in its essential, it, it's essential that you learn how to place them. Placing support and resistance areas is the most important skill you can master in trading. It's what makes you better than the guy sitting next to you. And placing them is easy. Support and resistance areas divide your charts up into buy and sell areas. Imagine they are the steps on a ladder as price is moving up. But when price comes down that ladder, those steps remain in the same place. They're just the opposite way. But you know what? You painted the one side of the house this week and you, you tracked your steps up and down the ladder. ladder. But you're not going to paint the side of the house, the other side of the house, till next summer. But when you put your ladder over there, price is at a different level. But you can track your steps up and down that ladder because they're the same steps. Now, when you're going to go up and paint the second floor, you have new steps. Now, the fact is, when you've isolated them correctly, and you've isolated them in the important ones, you'll find that one of the reasons they hold is because as price approaches these major areas, sell orders are triggered or buy orders are triggered. Because most of the trades in the world are not somebody sitting at their computer pushing a button. Most trades have been set up and they're to be set to be executed at a certain price. Most closing of trades are also done the same way. So what happens is price is moving up towards this level. This big buyer, this big trader, this bank, it, it, it triggers their sell. They're, they're closing their position. And what happens is that makes the price ease back down and doesn't go back up. Now price will bounce off it and eventually the, the sell order will be cleared out and price, there's no rule that says price can't keep moving up or price can't reverse and come back down. Now good traders don't randomly place entry orders and hope they get lucky. They place their entry orders at significant price levels. Significant levels come in many forms. Now, why does this work? Because this happens every time in every financial market, for that matter. This is not something I've made up. This is not something a half dozen traders made up. This is something that everybody who's trading knows about. It's no secret. And it's how the market works. You know, there is, for instance, when a store puts something on sale, say they have something that sells for $99.99 all the time. And they want to increase their sales. They want to increase their traffic. The buyer, the manager, the department head, the specialist knows exactly what price he can lower that product to that will generate 
an abundance of sales. You know, if you take something that's $99.99 and drop it to $95.99, people might not pay attention. But if you drop it to $91.99 or $89.99, you'll get a horde of people running to the store to buy it. It's important that you know. Same thing with price levels. Now, the fact is there's lots of indicators out there that will give you support and resistance levels, like Fibonacci levels. They all work wonderfully, except in this strategy. This strategy works best with what, like I said, which is what I call eyeballing, going back and looking on your chart for these significant prices. Now, are, there are three key rules you need to keep in mind when placing support and resistance areas. Place areas on the body of the candle. The body is more important to the wick. You know, you want to look for candles that have closing or the body at the same place, not some odd and end whole bunch of wicks that went up there. You're not looking just to place it at highs. So select from daily charts and zoom out until you see all around a year of data. Don't worry if you see a little bit more or less than a year. It's no big deal. Identify the highest and lowest bounces in that last year and place an area at each. Remember, place your areas at the bodies, not the wicks. And then place support and resistance areas between the first two by connecting the areas which have two or more bounces. You would generally find that there's five to eight support level resistance levels on a chart if you have more than eight, then you may be placing too many. Now, when you start drawing these on your charts and you're looking back over a year, maybe a year and a half, and you start getting lots and lots of them, go back. And this is what I said. You look at them and see maybe this was only significant in this one month of trading, but it wasn't significant in many more times. The more times it has posed a significant point because if the last four times price came anywhere near that level and it just went through it up or down, that level isn't a good level. Now, once you have your support and resistance level on your charts, that's just your starting point. Now you have to start telling the story of price. Now, every single candle, because remember, we're building the strategy. A strategy isn't just setting support and resistance and buying and selling at these levels. Now, every single candle on your chart tells a story. When you combine those candles together, you get the story of price. Now, the foundation for my trading strategy is reading and understanding the story of price. Okay. And as I did mention, this works for Forex. It works for crypto. It works for futures. It works for indices. It is not a asset or market sector phenomenon. In fact, the support and resistance levels were part of Dow theory developed by Charles Dow in the 1900s, and then we only had the stock markets. Now, when we look at our chart with our support and resistance levels, we want to be able, and we can only look at the most current window. We don't care what happened yesterday, weeks ago, months ago. We only care moving forward to the right. So what we want to know is who is in control of the market now? Now, we're not talking about trend lines. We're not talking about trending. We're not talking about any rule-based piece of information. We're talking about you understanding the markets. We're not talking about going back five time frames, two time frames, three time frames, nine time frames. We're not saying look at the last 19 candles or only the last four candles. What you want to do is look at your current chart and be able to tell who is in control of the market. Now, when price is moving down, that doesn't necessarily mean the sellers are in control of the market. When price is moving up, it doesn't necessarily mean the buyers are in control of the market. Because only the most recent candle can help you conclude who is in control of the markets. Because the first thing we want to look at, we see 
In this case, we're using three candles. Like I said, it could be five, it could be seven, nine, 14, 22. It doesn't make a difference. But we see the buyers, the sellers were in control of the markets. We saw price closing lower and lower. We saw, we saw short wicks to the bottom. So that's telling us the price is closing close to the lowest low. We didn't see any long wicks going up, meant the buyers had no momentum. But then we get a new candle here. Forget this is on the wall that you can't see yet. What does that one candle tell us? Well, this one candle, if you want to talk about Japanese candle definition, could be a doji, but it doesn't have to be a doji because we don't have any definition to it, except it must be a small body with a long lower wick and a small upper wick. And that's coming off of a down movement. That tells us there is indecision in the marketplace. That's it. That's all. So now we get these a million times a day. They're not unusual. But this very precise happening is unusual. It, in order to tell you part of the strategy is when price is moving down or up towards our resistance level or to our support level, our, price, our important price level, and we get a candle that has a short upper wick, a small body, and a long lower wick. It's what we call indecision. Now, flip that candle over if you're coming off of an uptrend. It doesn't necessarily have to have be the opposite color. It's kind of hard not to be. Now, indecision candles occur when buyers and sellers can not gain or control price. And they are common. They happen all the time. Most of the time, they mean absolutely nothing. But see here, we have a upward movement, not a trend, an upward movement. Again, for this example, we're only using three can, but technically we could have taken it all the way back to here. And it could have been six or eight candles. But when this movement comes up to a price level, a resistance level in this case, which is what we already had on our charts. And this indecision candle forms. Now, this is the opposite of one we were just looking at. This has a, always has a small body, but it had a long upper wick and a short lower wick. And where did it form? It formed directly on our level of Uh oh, hold on, let me get my mark off here. It formed directly on our, in this case, resistance level. So when price hits resistance and we get an indecision candle forming directly on it. So let's break down the story of price. We have a large upper wick, which shows the buyers tried to continue the bullish trend, but failed. Sellers took control and price pushed it down. We have a short lower wick, okay. small. This meant that we went into this time frame here. Buyers were in control. Buyers were able to push the price up to here, but they lost it. And the sellers were able to yank the price down here to create a newer low and close almost at the low. So the sellers were almost in control, but the markets were undecided. But you see, when this happens directly on our level of support or resistance, this strategy is setting itself up. Price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. This tells us that the sell area is working. When price pushed down into that sell area, 
sell orders are triggered and buyers can no longer continue it up. So this is a story of price on this chart. And this story gives us a nice little price action setup. This is all we're looking for is a nice little price action setup. We don't care about tomorrow. We don't care about next week. We don't care about five hours from now. We only care it gave us a setup for right now. So price action allows you to take many different types of trades. Reversals, continuations, range, swing, breakout, scalp trades. Today, we're only talking about the setup, the support and resistance for the reversal trade. So reversals occur quite often, but if you do not know what to look for, you can't trade them. Reversals are one of the strongest price action setups and one of the easiest to trade. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the preceding trend, preceding price movement. We're looking for the indecision candle directly on our support or resistance zone. And we're looking for the reversal trend. So what's the preceding trend? Doesn't matter whether it's three time frames, five time. If we can just look to say someone was in control of the market. So we're looking at this. We can obviously just use our eyeballs and say that the bulls, the bears, are in control of the market. Here we can see the bulls are in control of the market. And then bam, we get that indecision candle directly on our support line or resistance line. Now in this case, look at that. It's not the opposite color, but we still had a strong upper long upper wick small lower wick, small body, directly on resistance. Now, if the indecision candle doesn't form on your level of support, it has no validity, it's not even worth, you don't even look at it, you just move on. It's, like I said, these appear a zillion times a day. See, they appear all the, you know, the only time you're looking for them of any importance for a reversal trade setup is when they appear on the resistance line. Now what they're setting you up for is a nice resistance trade. Now we have no guarantee the price is gonna move this way. There is no guarantee when we get this indecision candle here the price is going to fall. And not that the trend's gonna reverse itself. The price is just gonna ease back down and continue up. But what we've done is we've moved the odds in our favor. We've moved to a high probability we've moved to a high probability setup. Because only one of two things can happen but you have three choices of a trade. You can set up a sell with your stop loss here, your execution here, your target point here. You can now set your risk reward ratio and set up your trade. Now, if your stop loss is here and you set up a sell trade and the next time frame it doesn't move downward, guess what? Your trade never got executed. So no foul, no harm, no foul. If it did get executed because price started to fall down, but then price continued went back to continue on trade, you get stopped out here with a small loss or your trade got executed and continued down to the next resistance level. And what happened was you made nice profit. So what would you have done here? What would you have done here? What would you have done here? 
Now, the other choice is never get taken. You never even have a straight setup. But they happen so often. And like I said, they must be on your level of support and resistance. Here. Here. See, nothing here. But when they occur, they give you the perfect trade setup for a reversal trade setup. So getting it at the right time is what's very, very important because you don't have the luxury of waiting for that reversal trend. You must enter and set up the trade when the indecision candle has formed because otherwise that reversal trend can occur, but that reversal trend can maybe be one or two or three time segments. And if you didn't take advantage of it, it's too late for you to get into the markets. Now, keep in mind, by setting a tight stop loss at the swing high of that indecision candle, you will have failed trades. You're always going to have failed trades, but you will get out at a very reasonable price. So all you do is when you've got the price movement, you've got the indecision candle, stop loss, entry price, target point. Set your trade up, wait for it to get executed on the next candle. And the reverse is true coming off of a downtrend, entry price above the indecision candle, stop loss below the swing low. And targets are also easy. You need to make sure your target comes before the next barrier, like the next price level, the next support and resistance level. But you have to also make sure that there's nothing between. If there's a significant price level, there's something else in between. You have to reduce your target price because you need a hope that it doesn't get stuck in between. So in other words, entry point, stop loss, target point. But see, when you calculate here, entry price, Stop loss to set your proper risk reward. You'd have to set your target here, but you have a major resistance level in between. You therefore don't execute to trade. So that's a beginning look at building yourself a support and resistance strategy. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you learned a little and now start building your own reversal trade setup with the few rules and few guidelines I gave you. And before you know it, you're going to have the perfect trade set up. Thank you very much and have a great trading night. Bye now.